good morning everyone the topic i am going to discuss today is compensation in power system you know the electric power is being generated in a far away location and is being transmitted and distributed to the load centers this electric power must be of quality power a quality power will have the following features number 1 is constant voltage then number 2 constant frequency then it should be harmonic free supply constant power factor minimum load interruption and it must come to the stable state after any circuit breaker interruption so such features are called as quality power supply in these features the first two plays a prominent role in defining the quality power that is the first one is constant voltage second one is constant frequency you know this constant voltage is a important feature that electrical system must possess must possess the reactive power compensation in fact is directly is directly related to the voltage control the voltage control is very sensitive to the control of reactive power when the reactive power changes the voltage changes when the compensation is confined to any particular load or a group of loads then this is called as load compensation so in a load compensation we concentrate only on the compensation of a particular load at a particular location now what are the main objectives of load compensation a load compensation must have three main objectives one is power factor correction and number two improvement of voltage regulation and number 3 load balancing you know the compensation equipment such as power factor correction equipment is usually installed near to the consumer premises power factor correction and load balancing are desirable even when the supply voltage is stiff that is when there is no voltage regulation is required so ideally a reactive power requirement of a load should be provided locally rather than drawing reactive component of current from a remote power station you know the most industrial loads have lagging power factor the meaning is they absorb reactive power hence the load current increases that is they tend to draw larger than that is required to supply the real power alone so only the real power is ultimately useful in energy conversion and excess load current has to be paid by the consumer the cost involved in the excess current and the cable that is required to carry the excess current and the i square r loss there is a joule loss involved due to that excess current has to be bore by the consumer so when the load power factors are low generators and distribution network current cannot be used at full efficiency so the control of voltage becomes difficult throughout the network so supply tariffs to the industrial tower consumers usually prefer low power factor loads encouraging the use of power factor correction equipment so whenever the any industrial load utilizes the power with low power factor then it the meaning is it draws more current than that is required so 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 what the supply utility will do they will uh, uh, imply they will impose penalty for those consumers who use extra power is yes, the another uh, objective of uh, load compensation is uh, voltage regulation so in this the supply utilities are usually bound by the statute to maintain the voltage within the given limits that is plus or minus 5% so the rapidly varying loads uh, could cause a voltage dips hazardous to the operation of the protective equipment it also causes discomfort for the eyes for example if you take electric arc furnace 
the electric arc furnace used to melt the metal so here there this causes lot of voltage variation when it works so this causes voltage dips hazardous to the operation of protective equipment certain uh, electric arc uh, uh, bulb or carbon arc bulb when it is used as a load this causes discomfort to the eyes so therefore we have to maintain a constant voltage throughout their operation the obvious way to improve the voltage regulation would be to strengthen the power system by increasing the size and number of generating units but this approach is very costly and also raises the fault level and the associated switch gear ratings then the other option available is to size the transmission and distribution system according to the maximum demand for the real power and to manage the reactive power by means of compensators without increasing the fault level so the compensators are used locally where the load is uh, erected the next uh, objective of uh, load compensation is load balancing you know the most ac power systems are three phase and are designed for balanced operation unbalanced operation gives rise to current or electric field in the opposite direction that is it causes oscillating torque in ac machines so such components can have undesirable effects such as losses in motors and generating units oscillating torque in ac machines increased ripple in rectifiers then malfunction of several types of equipment saturation of transformers and excessive triple and harmonics and neutral currents you know whenever the voltage waveform deviates from the fundamental frequency then this is regarded as uh, harmonics the harmonics above the rated frequency are filtered using filters so what happens is when the compensators are used it also generates harmonics because the compensators are thyristors are using thyristorized devices so therefore this thyristor devices will produce harmonics so such harmonics will be suppressed internally and will be filtered so let us see a brief uh, quality of ideal compensators so ideal compensators will have three main qualities one it supplies the exact reactive power requirement of the load that means whatever reactive power that is required by the load at the present moment shall be supplied by the compensator ideal compensator then second feature should be it must present a constant voltage characteristics at its terminals so the voltage must be constant whatever may be the load then third features should be it should be capable of operating independently in three phases so the compensators will be provided in all the three phases all the three must operate independently so these are the ideal features of a good compensator or ideal compensator for next topic we'll meet in the subsequent lecture classes Thank you